forward uh, hitting the button now. So um, formally welcoming everyone to our mindfulness session today. And this is our first time offering this. Um, my name is Sarah Chettleborough and I am a counselor in student services. And so grateful to have Rachel Athey with me today. And she is um, our practicum student. She started, gosh, was it a month or two ago now, Rachel? About six weeks ago. About six weeks ago. Um, so she is just a wonderful addition to our team and brings a wealth of experience in yoga and mindfulness, as well as her recent training in counseling. So um, very grateful that she's going to take the lead on the session today. And um, as always, we really also welcome your feedback because we are always trying new things, trying to see what is helpful for our students. So um, thanks for, for being here today. and. Um, we look forward to hearing what you think of the session. Um, so before I go any further, I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional lands of the Kwisatzen and Lekwungen families and ancestors um, on the lands of, of where Royal Roads resides and ties us all together today. Um, and personally, I'm joining from just down the road um, in an area called Machosen, which is on the lands of the Chiana families and ancestors. So. I think I always feel extra grateful in June as the days are so beautiful and long and we get some more sunshine and here we get beautiful low tides in Perry Bay and uh, the tide is just way out this afternoon. I peaked at it earlier today um, when I was out for a little walk and uh, just, you know, such gratitude for um, the opportunity to live here. Um, we're going to have a chance to do a little check-in, talk about how mindfulness can support your academic studies. Um, also, just kind of a review of what is mindfulness. I imagine some of you might be really familiar with it, and that's why you're here, is because you are you know the value of it. And others, perhaps this is something you're kind of checking out, and it, it's new for you. Um, Rachel's got some awesome tools and strategies. She's going to take us through some exercises, and then we'll have a chance to check out and um, She's put together some resources that we can share as well. So um, hoping everyone can hear me. Welcome. We've had another person or two join. Um, if you have any questions, thoughts you want to contribute, please jump in at any time. We try to keep these pretty informal and hopefully we'll have a little time at the end too to chat um, if anyone has questions. So jump in at any point, ask you know things in the chat box, share ideas. I think a lot of the learning that we gain from these sessions comes from the sharing between students. So um, really appreciate your contributions today. And with that, I will pass things over to Rachel. Thank you, Rachel, for taking this on today. Yeah. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, and as Sarah said, you know, especially at this level of learning, we're all coming here with different experiences and maybe different levels of experience with practices like mindfulness and meditation. So um, I'll go through the presentation and some of the tools that Sarah mentioned. But yeah, feel free anytime to pop into the chat or ask a question um, or turn on your mic if you'd like to say something as well. So the reasons that we're exploring mindfulness as a way to support your academic journey um, is because we know it can be difficult to manage personal and professional and academic responsibilities, particularly with the stress that arises, you know, from deadlines and tests and assignments. So feeling stressed and feeling overwhelmed and pulled in different directions can really lead to feeling sort of scattered and overwhelmed. And as a result, it can instigate those automatic thoughts that sort of arise. Yes, COVID uncertainty, exactly. It's definitely a factor. So it can lead you know, to those automatic thoughts that arise in our mind that become pretty unhelpful. And this contributes to more stress and that can lead to things like procrastination, low mood and difficulty concentrating. So all of that can relate to just your ability to, to show up for yourself and also to concentrate on your studies. So the focus today on mindfulness is really just to explore ways in which we can sort of start to train the mind to spend a little more time in the present moment and a little less time preoccupied with those maybe unhelpful and unproductive thoughts. 
So just a little reflection and check in. So hopefully you can see all of these on the screen. So I'm just wondering what types of thoughts um, and unhelpful thinking patterns are you struggling with or do you find yourself struggling with? So in here we can, you can circle, there you go. You can circle some things on there. You can write something in the chat. So I see you've got some self-doubt, overanalyzing perfectionism, ruminating on the past, worrying about the future. You have an extra check there on overanalyzing. Self-doubt. It seems like all of the ones listed. Imposter syndrome. That's something that seems to come up quite regularly in our services, especially as you're pursuing your education or maybe you're heading into your practicum where you're entering into a new role and you're trying to apply the things that you've learned. And then those really unhelpful thoughts that come into your mind are, you know, am I qualified to do this? Is this the right thing for me to do? And what else? So people unsolved little things. So focusing on things that you have yet to solve or some things that are out of your control. Exhausted, sleep deprived. Yeah, and feeling exhausted too and sleep deprived, especially if you're spending a lot of time late night studying or with your other responsibilities, that definitely can diminish some of our resiliency. And we know that when that happens, more of those really unhelpful thoughts can start to creep in negative thinking lack of sleep is such a common challenge yes exactly so any any other thought patterns there or unhelpful thoughts that you feel like you're struggling with does anyone want to speak to how that impacts your life as a student or your academic success maybe in the chat box or you can write it right there on the screen I see, Rachel, I think a couple people have already referenced that, too, is um, like taking forever to read and yeah. process, um, can't keep up. Like there's so much material coming at us. And I yeah. think um, what you've identified is that, you know, that that level of stress really impacts our ability to, to stay grounded and focus. Yeah. Um, and some of the learning strategies stuff that we've talked about in the past, like there are ways to manage your time and there's ways to implement those other tools. Um, but a lot of what gets in our way is, is the preoccupation with those thoughts that are really unhelpful. We've set aside the time to focus on something like an assignment, but we just can't concentrate because our mind is really being drawn towards something else. So what is mindfulness? So some of you might be really familiar, but some of the sort of basic definitions that we work with is mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment non-judgmentally and another one is mindfulness is simply the knack of noticing without comment whatever is happening in your present experience so the non-judgment non-judgmental part of that really means that we're having an experience in each moment. Um, and if we bring some mindfulness to that experience, we aren't necessarily judging it sort of good or bad. And by noticing the experience that we're having, we can develop a little more self-awareness and that can help with emotional balance and impulse control. So it's really about recognizing sort of our inner and outer experiences, experiences and understanding how they affect our well-being. So particularly our thoughts our feelings and our behaviors. So some of you identified in the chat, there's just so much going on with your, your tests and your assignments. And so when you're noticing that happening, and you can't necessarily change the amount of assignments that you have or these deadlines, but just bring awareness to, to the way that you're reacting and your reactions and what is sort of preventing you from, from showing up and focusing on what you need to do and how that's affecting your well-being. So anything in the chat there, Sarah? The chat box doesn't pop up on my screen. Oh, it doesn't? Oh, um, if you click on the little bubble, um, 
do you see like something that looks like a little talk text bubble on the right, like where you shared to your screen? Does that come up? Oh, yeah. That works? Good. I, everything, I think we're okay in the chat box, but just so yeah, in case you want to be able to okay. look at it. Yes, um, I do want to see it. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Okay. No worries. Right. So what is the difference between mindfulness and meditation? So they are really similar in some ways. So mindfulness is, is a part of meditation, but mindfulness is also quite a bit more broad than the act of meditation. So mindfulness is more the simple act of paying attention and noticing and being in, in the present moment. Whereas meditation does typically refer to almost more of a formal seated practice. So meditation is an intentional practice where you use maybe some focus and some concentration, often on a single aspect of your experience to increase calmness and kind of focus on clearing your mind. So mindfulness really isn't about clearing your mind. It's just bringing some awareness to your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors in the present moment. And it's a practice actually that you can sort of take with you anywhere and anytime. So there's many different ways to sort of practice mindfulness. And some people think that it really requires that sort of formal practice of sitting and closing your eyes like meditation. But it's something that we can develop and sort of carry with us throughout our day in various moments. So a little background on of the science behind mindfulness um, is that research has found that mindfulness is a practice that sort of dampens the amygdala and increases connections to the parts of our brain that help us be less reactive to stress, but also recover from stress better when we experience it. The other research has shown that um, when we practice mindfulness, it increases our ability to pay attention, it improves cognition, emotions, um, and the ability to handle and recover stress is something that's really important as a foundation of our resiliency. So resiliency is something we talk a lot about in sort of the other presentations and the work we do in counseling and learning strategies. So mindfulness is sort of a tool that can just relate to all the different foundations of resiliency. So resiliency is in the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties, misfortune and change. Uh, we can look at it as our ability to bounce back and our ability to manage stress in healthy ways. And the great thing about resiliency is that it's something that we can build within ourselves. We don't necessarily just have a certain level of resiliency. Um, and when it comes to, you know, managing your academic studies, paying attention to these foundations of resiliency can really help you show up better for yourself and take care of yourself as you navigate all the challenges that you're facing. So the mindfulness piece of resiliency really helps us maybe gain some awareness uh, to the content of your thoughts, which is the first step in choosing how you're going to react to your thoughts. So this can be helpful in sort of shifting our mindset and the way we approach areas of our life that might need some attention. So those foundations there up on the slide of resilience. Um, is mindset, health and energy, sense of purpose, and relationships. And mindfulness really does relate to all of these aspects, all of these foundations of resilience, because if we can bring a little more self-awareness into what's happening for us, then we can notice a little more where these areas in our life, which areas could use some attention. So a mindfulness practice doesn't have to be complicated. It's something that you can sort of take with you uh, throughout your day. So in its sort of simplest form, one way you can begin just to practice a mindfulness is the simple practice of pausing, 
breathing and noticing. Yes, Rika says identifying priorities in a way that helps you bring some balance. Yes, exactly. So this pausing, breathing, and noticing is something that it can be done really at any point during the day. It can be something that you utilize in the morning before you start your day. It can be something that is maybe helpful for when you're transitioning between activities. Maybe you're transitioning from um, work towards your school study. Maybe you're transitioning from focusing on one course to another course. And instead of just sort of continuing on in maybe sort of a stressful way, just trying to get things done, if you can take a few moments to pause, take a breath and notice how you're feeling, gives you an opportunity to attend to anything you might need. And it can be as simple as maybe you're hungry or maybe you're thirsty, or maybe you could use a 15 minute break to go for a walk. So to answer your question, that is really speaking to that self-awareness piece. And the first aspect of that is almost just stopping and noticing. And that simple practice is contributing to building our self-awareness, which involves sort of understanding what it is we need in each moment. So that's kind of the, that's sort of the simplest way that you can practice mindfulness. And then as you maybe build on creating a, a longer or a deeper mindfulness practice, you could start to set aside a little more time for this. And those steps would involve just observing the present moment as is, letting your judgments roll by, returning to observing the present moment, and being kind to your wandering mind. So the first practice was just that pause, breathe, and notice. And then as we begin to expand on this practice and set aside a little bit more time, as we're being mindful, um, more thoughts are going to pop into our head or judgments about our experience. And instead of that intentional practice of meditation where we're working to clear the mind with a mindfulness practice, we are really allowing things to arise and allowing things to pass by and just keeping in, in our focus that moving away from judging what's happening to just noticing and to speak to that building self-awareness piece, when we pause and we take the time to really notice the thoughts and the feelings that are coming up, that is what's building our self-awareness. You'll notice, as we were talking about earlier, there's a lot of negative thoughts arising or there's a lot of worries that are arising here. You'll notice more what is the pattern of thoughts or what is what are the unhelpful thoughts that are coming into mind here. And that allows you just to begin to create a little bit of space between yourself and those thoughts. So noticing when they're unhelpful and seeing if you can shift away from that, closing your mindfulness practice, and then sort of focusing more on what it is you need to do in this present moment to either attend to what you need or focus on a task or an assignment or something like that. So it's the same sort of basic steps. It's just that you're sort of building the amount of time that you're doing that. And in a way, as these challenging thoughts are rising and these distractions are rising and you're continuing with this practice, it's almost like a muscle that you're building. And the more you do that, that self-awareness piece builds. And when you find yourself in different situations, then it's something where when we were talking before about being less reactive to stress, you've sort of built that mindfulness muscle. So you notice a little more when those things are arising and you can begin to sort of shift the mindset maybe a little bit easier. So mindfulness, like we were just discussing, is really something that you can do throughout the day. It's something you can build an intentional practice around. Mindfulness is something that you can do while you're walking or while you're exercising, allowing those thoughts to arise, letting them pass, taking that non-judgmental stance. But there's also many exercises that you can engage in. And something that can be really helpful 
is sort of guided practices where you listen to a recording or you engage in a particular exercise where the mind is sort of being guided to focus on different things that are really happening in the present moment. So the three exercises that we are going to explore today is something called a three minute breathing space, um, a body scan, and the exercise of grounding through your senses. So the first one, this three minute breathing space, I have a recording that I would like to share. It's a recording that, that I really like. It's by John Kabat-Zinn. And when we're thinking about these sort of recorded exercises that can guide us, it can be really about finding one that resonates for you. It could be the tone of someone's voice or what's happening in the recording, whether it resonates for you or not. Um, but this is one that um, I have found is, is pretty good. So I'm gonna play it here. And so just to get situated for the exercise, however you're sitting, just notice if you can just get a little bit more comfortable. So if there's anything you can do um, with your current posture or your seat, you'd like to shift or change positions or lie down for a couple of minutes is a three minute exercise. So the first step being just to attending to sort of your experience right now and seeing what you can do to make yourself a little more comfortable. It's an exercise that you can do with your eyes open or your eyes closed. So I'll play the recording now. In step one of the breathing space, becoming aware of the present moment in its fullness by deliberately adopting an erect and dignified posture, whether sitting or standing, allowing your eyes to close if that is possible or appropriate in this moment, otherwise keeping them open. And in either case, resting in an awareness of your inner experience, opening to it and asking, what is my experience right now? What thoughts are going through the mind? As best you can, noting thoughts as mental events, perhaps even becoming aware of their content in words. What feelings are here? Turning towards and opening to any sense of emotional discomfort or unpleasant feelings. What body sensations are here right now? perhaps quickly scanning the body to pick up on any sensations of tightness or bracing. Now in step two, gathering and redirecting your attention to focus on the physical sensations of the breath, just breathing itself. Moving in close to the sense of the breath in the belly feeling the sensations in the abdominal wall as it expands with each in-breath and falls back with each out-breath. With full awareness following the breath all the way in and all the way out, using the breathing itself to anchor you in the present moment. And now, in step three, expanding the field of awareness around your breathing so that in addition to the sensations of the breath, it includes a sense of the body as a whole, your posture and your facial expression, how they feel from the inside. If you become aware of any sensations of discomfort, tension or resistance, experimenting gently with breathing into them on the in-breath 
and breathing out from them on the out-breath, perhaps feeling a softening and releasing with each out-breath. If you care to, perhaps saying to yourself on the out-breath, it's already here. Whatever it is, it's already here. Let me feel it. And now, as best you can, bringing this expanded, more spacious and accepting awareness to the next moments of your day, whatever circumstances you find yourself in, as it continues to unfold. Right. So that was the three minute breathing space. So that was a, a guided version of that. So the steps being to stop and sort of get in a comfortable position, attending to what is, what's present, focusing on the breath, and then attending to the body. So I'm curious to how that experience of, of practicing that was for you or how it was listening to the recording and being guided if anyone has anything they want to share about that so with these guided type exercises Sometimes they can be helpful to practice, but it also can be a self-led practice. So sometimes if we find recordings that we really like, then after a while we get familiar with the recording and it's something that we're more easily able to do sort of on our own. you find guidance and beneficial. I really do as well. Mindfulness is definitely something I've really tried to incorporate in my life. And I still always have my favorite recordings that I go to. I have them on my phone. I have them on my computer. And, uh, you know, mindfulness and meditation also traditionally has been very much a guided practice, having someone else sort of guide us in that or um, some of Element that just allows you to actually truly be present because you're not trying to sort of guide your experience in any way. And later on, when we share a list of resources, I have um, a lot of different recordings and things that we can offer you. And this one also is on that list as well, if that would be helpful. So that was the first um, one that we'll talk about today. And the second exercise is a body scan exercise. So we did that in the last workshop, if anyone, if any of you were there. Um, body scans can be a really great mindfulness practice, especially if you're feeling a lot of anxiety, if you're feeling discomfort in your body, um, and bringing our awareness through our body and the experience that our body is having can be really helpful in getting out of our mind. So. One aspect of mindfulness is that focusing on the thoughts that are arising um, and letting them pass without judgment. And another practice of mindfulness really is just tuning into how your body is feeling. So the steps in um, body scans all basically follow the same sort of pattern, which is getting into a comfortable position, focusing on how your body feels, and then moving your attention really slowly through the body. So it can be from the top down, it can be from the bottom up. And just like in the earlier mindfulness practices, when you do feel your attention uh, wandering away, you gently bring it back to just the focus you have of the body. So sometimes in certain days, it's you're more distracted, the mind is carried away. And just as many times as that takes, you bring the attention back to body scan. 
and then in the end you sort of take in your body as a whole and then guide yourself out of the practice so i'd love to lead you through just a couple minutes we'll just do a quick body scan exercise and just like the previous one, there's many recordings that you can listen to, uh, shorter or longer. You can use them when you're trying to build also like a relaxation practice too before bed. But we'll do one now that could be just something simple that you could do while you're studying in the middle of the day. So getting into a comfortable position. So if you're sitting on your chair, then maybe again, just sort of adjusting your position there. It's nice if you're sitting on a chair to maybe firmly plant your feet on the ground. If you would like to take a moment and lay down and change your position, that's also a great way to practice a body scan. And when you're ready, if it's comfortable to you, closing your eyes, then I'll start just by taking a big deep breath in. And a nice full breath out. So before we begin, just bringing your awareness to maybe your posture or the position that your body is taking. And noticing the contact points of the body on the ground or the chair. Noticing what is beneath you. And then as you breathe here, Maybe noticing the space in which the breath and the body expands the upwards and around you. And then we'll move our awareness through the body, and starting from our feet and moving up. So they call these areas of your body. You're bringing all your focused attention and energy to that space in the body, noticing how it feels. And again, when you Notice distractions arise in the background. Just coming back to bringing your focus to that area. So as you're ready, bringing your focus and your attention down into your feet. And moving your awareness through your calves and your shins. Moving your awareness towards your thighs, your upper legs. Noticing your pelvis. Your low back. Your mid back. Your upper back and your shoulders. Moving the awareness through your upper arms, your lower arms, and down into your hands. Moving the awareness to the back of your neck, up into your head and your scalp. And down into your forehead, your eyes, your cheeks, and noticing your whole face. Down into your neck, your chest, your ribs. And then last down into your belly. And then moving your awareness to your whole body here all at once, noticing the whole shape of your body. And take a deep breath in here as you're ready. And a full breath out. And take as many cycles of breath as you need here. And then when you're ready, just reopening your eyes. And 
I'm just coming back here to the present moment when you're ready. That was a simple body scan exercise. And if it's something you practice that you'll engage in, you'll find different ways that work for you. Some people like to start from the top down. It can be a very quick one minute exercise where you move through those parts of your body fairly quickly. You can slow down as you notice things in certain areas, spend a little time, a few more cycles of breath. And as I mentioned before, there's lots of guided exercises and I'll share some of those resources with you. And they can range from three minutes to 10 minutes. And there's longer recorded practices that are even 30 minutes long that might ask you to draw your attention to breathing and sort of different things that can be great to incorporate into more of a relaxation practice. If you find you've been having trouble sleeping, and those longer guided practices can be really beneficial at night. And even some of these shorter practices just to get a little bit out of your head and maybe some of those unhelpful thoughts and in into your body. So if anyone has anything they want to ask about that or pop over into the chat, if they found that challenging or they enjoyed it. Thanks, Rachel. I, I love that one. I um... I use it a lot at night. When I can't sleep, I find just the focus of really grounding into my body and you know, being taken through that routine just helps me leave behind a lot of what's on my mind. Um, yeah. A question I have for you is, um, I, I mean, there's also progressive muscle relaxation, which is like a body scan with that tensing and releasing. Do you find there's like you like one over another or do they just kind of both have their place or their benefits? Um, others might be familiar to that with that too from, I think that's more yoga maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I think Sarah just said, you know, something interesting in the chat. Um, she said that that was the body scan was easier than the first practice. And the first practice mm -hmm. is sort of attend to different things where the body scan is like, you know, just focusing right on your body. You have this one kind of focus. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's many different ways to practice mindfulness and your, your root in might be more through the body, whereas someone it's more, you know, through the mind. Mm -hmm. And I think with the progressive muscle relaxation, it's like a body scan, but then you're adding an additional element, which is, if some of you aren't familiar, it would be like to squeeze your hands and then release them. So you're kind of bringing sensation and tension into that area and then you're also relaxing it. And so if you were doing a body scan and you were having some difficulty sort of focusing through the body, that could add another element to it, another sort of sensory experience to really bring you into your body. And then also adds the element of noticing what it feels like to release tension. That can be done in other ways like pulling your shoulders up to your ears and squeezing them in and then like releasing them. And it can bring awareness to how much tension we're holding in our shoulders. So I love, yeah, I love the progressive muscle relaxation and that's definitely something that we could add um, a resource and a link to as well. But I think it's kind of just almost another version of the body scan in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wonder if in some ways it might even be an easier to start because it is a little more physical and intangible as you're building a mindful practice but I you know I don't know you you uh, are more the expert in this area but it's interesting to think uh, about these different approaches and when they might feel good and what you know everyone's unique right yeah and I think that's an important point it really is about what works for you it really and sometimes some things work on some days uh, and they don't work on others so there's so many mindfulness resources and we'll give you a big list, but the process of exploring what works for you, whether it's progressive muscle relaxation or body scans or some of those more simple guided exercises, you'll know because of the way that you respond to that afterwards. You think, oh, I feel so much better when I do that. That exercise really helps me sleep or that particular practice helps me study. But it can be a bit of, you know, um, trial and error sometimes in finding what what really works for you. So sometimes when you try something, um, 
then and it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean that any other practices will. It just means maybe that's not the one that appeals to you the most. Someone. Oh, Sarah, yeah, I you? think, yeah, someone's having trouble hearing, so I'm not quite sure what to advise other than the standard thing, but we'll hope that we can get her or get Myra back in. But you keep going, Rachel. All right, so body scans, as Sarah mentioned, things like progressive muscle relaxation. And then just the third uh, technique that we'll talk about today is really grounding through your senses. So sometimes this one, just like the body scan, can be a little bit easier and almost quicker for people than that attending that three-step exercising or attending to the mind and then the experience in the body um, is grounding through your senses. So this is a technique that's often used, it's even used in things like panic attacks and anxiety, but it's also a mindfulness technique that can really be used in any moment. So the five sensory exercise, there's many different versions of these as well, but sort of the classic five sensory exercise is really to bring awareness to all your different um, senses. So the first thing would be to notice five things that you can see, notice four things that you can feel, and the third, notice three things you can hear, and notice two things you can smell, and then one thing that you can taste. So that's the kind of the sort of longer version of the sensory exercise. That can be changed to just noticing one of each. It doesn't necessarily have to be that five, four, three, two, one. It can be just noticing one uh, for each sense. And then the three sensory exercise is noticing three things that you can see, three things that you can hear, and then moving three parts of your body. So we have the link to some of those in, in the resources. The three sensory exercise, it's often referred to as the 333. Three, three. That is definitely one that's really can be easy to utilize in the moment. So when you feel a lot of anxiety rising up, or you feel a lot of discomfort or distress, it's just stopping for a moment, maybe engaging that pause, breathe and notice, and then sort of looking around and just acknowledging three things that you can see in the room, listening for those three sounds, and then moving the three parts of your body. It's about, you know, a 20 second, 30 second exercise, but it can sort of almost interrupt that process when you feel like you're starting to get a little bit heightened um, or a little bit stressed out. So it was not something that we'll go through today. Um, because we're sort of running out of time and I want to leave some time for, for questions and comments and things like that. Um, but in the resources, we'll have just a bit more of an explanation on how to do that. So does anyone have any experience with that? Um, with sensory exercises or have tried that in the past for anxiety? I'll maybe jump in, Rachel, while, oh, never mind, mariko has got her hand up. Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to share that years ago, I had gone through a really interesting exercise where we had to lie down. It was actually during a dance um, training. Uh, where we had to imagine that there was an iron and that it's almost like we're imagining someone ironing like each part of your body so it's like a yeah. heavy weight right so it might be your left arm and then to the fingertips and then up the shoulders and then you know just from tip you know at the top of the head to the tip of the toes it's yeah. kind of like it's so relaxing and I I was just reminded of it just as you were going through this exercise. I kind of forgot about that ironing exercise, so I'm glad yeah. that I kind of remembered. And it's it's a great visualization. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point, too. Like adding any kind of visualization to a practice, too, also helps you focus. So I haven't heard of that iron one. I really like that. Um, but sometimes with the body scan, people imagine kind of like 
waves moving over them or like kind of this a visualization of kind of a scan from the top down so adding something like that into the practices I think can be really helpful and what you identified is like that ironing is almost like feeling like that sensation of sort of weight on the body it can help maybe sort of the muscles relax and allow you to settle into that exercise and I think also if we also use the pace or the speed right you could slow it right down yeah. and that yeah. kind of it's very calming and the weight like heavy weight and um, I actually have uh, one of those heavy blanket weighted blanket things that are supposed to be really helpful for people with anxiety or sleep problems yeah. and I find it's super relaxing it's just one tool that's kind of like an additional tool if anyone has trouble like relaxing or getting to sleep I, I really enjoy my new blanket. <laughs> yes, I think those blankets are amazing also. And I think you can, all these sort of simpler practices can be expanded into, you know, a longer practice where you're getting on the floor and you're getting in a really comfortable position. And as you mentioned, maybe with blankets and pillows and then going through some of these exercises. And like we were speaking to earlier, you can build on this mindfulness practice and it can look many different ways. So it's something you can use in a moment when you need it between activities, but like that muscle that we're sort of building that will help us engage with stress better sort of on a daily basis, we can grow that practice um, and add different elements to it as well. Essential oils. Yes, all part of a building that practice kind of around something. So Maybe if it's your time, you've carved out some time to practice your mindfulness, what are some elements that you can add that enhance your experience? And then those elements begin to signal to you that it's, it's time to sort of engage in that practice. Yeah. Use it, so Sarah, use the visual exercise with students when your advisor, what three things? Yeah. Your favorite color, definitely. Yeah, it's something that can be really easy to use in the moment. I was just going to jump into um, Rachel, if that's okay, and and um, say that the the senses one I think is so effective when you're feeling anxious, like say before an exam or a presentation, because it grounds you so well to your space. Um, and like the yeah, other Sarah, <laughs> um, I think something works that works quite well with kids and. Um, uh, just that kind of panicked feeling um, that we can get before something that's causing us some anxiety. I think it can be a, just an incredibly powerful and grounding exercise. So thank you so much for, for sharing that one. Yeah, and we're kind of winding down our time. We've got just a few minutes left. So just an opportunity if anyone has any questions or wanted to pop into the chat or say anything or maybe share. Um, what you're taking away from the workshop, something that was new for you today. And Sarah, you, you were going to speak to about the resource list, about who we were going to posting it somewhere, or that would take a little mm -hmm. bit of time. Yeah, so... Um, we, uh, well, Rachel has <laughs> put together a fantastic list of different mindfulness resources, and they are in a Word document right now that we will um, just be putting up on uh, the Counseling Services page, webpage. Um, as you probably saw, Royal Roads has just released a whole new website, so there's lots of changes happening there right now. Um, and it may take a couple days before we get that up. So if anyone would like that list, um, feel free to just email. I'm just going to put in our general counseling at royalroads.ca uh, email address and just send an email saying please send list and then we can respond back to you or if you're okay to wait for a few days check the counseling services webpage in a few days and we'll uh, prioritize trying to get that up as soon as possible. Yeah. Thanks Sarah. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, Allison says she's got three new strategies to take away, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, it can be, 
sometimes thinking about mindfulness or starting a new practice can be really overwhelming when you feel like you already have so much stuff going on, but it can be really just starting with things that are simple that resonates for you and just incorporating them just as you're able to and beginning to build on that when you're ready. It doesn't have to be formal or complicated. Yeah. So I think that was sometimes my hesitation in, in introducing all the exercises because I don't want it to seem like you need to engage in these long, you know, exercises that some people might not, they might not resonate for people, but yeah, it can be really simple and informal. Um, one thing we didn't talk about today is, is walking meditations or walking mindfulness practices where, you know, maybe you're taking a break from your studying or your exams and you go outside and you're doing some of these practices, but you're also walking or even practicing some mindfulness while you're, you're exercising or while you're cooking or things like that as well. Yeah, so thanks for that comment, Sarah. Something that we're hoping to um, get started in July is having a weekly kind of midweek mindful moment um, session. So just be kind of about 10 minutes. Um, probably we're thinking noon on Wednesdays, but open to feedback and suggestions if that's the kind of thing that you might like to just pop into and we probably run it over. We're still planning, but maybe about eight weeks and have a different mindfulness um, exercise each week and um, just pilot that to see if that's something that students might find helpful and create some resources to go along with it. Yeah, 15, yeah. Consistent time and day, yeah, Michelle, that's kind of what we were thinking of. Mm -hmm. If it was, you know, once a week, like in the middle of the week and people can tune in, yeah. And then also sharing that practice afterwards. So kind of building that sort of toolbox. We just explored three today, um, but there's lots of different ones. We can do more with breathing and more with the body. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. Nice to hear some support for that idea. Thank you for your feedback. Awesome. And also just to mention this, yeah, it's something we can also <clears throat> help with like in the counseling and learning strategies department if some of you are seeking support um, in that area. Sometimes mindfulness is a really great tool that you're incorporating in some of your self-care and some of the strategies that you're using to help. So sometimes having a session with one of us it can also be helpful with incorporating some of those strategies because it can involve sort of time management too and and different things to sort of fit that in so if it's something that you feel like you need support with also we're available for that yeah so you can book an appointment through the libcal system that's on our the link on our web page and um or send us an email give us a call um and something i don't know if we mentioned we do both learning strategy support, so things like time management, study skills, uh, some coaching and support through a major project or thesis, as well as general um, more mental health and emotional counseling support. So um, yeah, we welcome you to connect with us at any time. And I think at this point, I maybe I'll stop the recording. Is that okay, Rachel? And then if anyone has any follow-up questions or wants to hang out for a few minutes with us, we're here and um, otherwise a big thank you to Rachel for running our first mindfulness session. So grateful that we had your expertise to pull this together. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I hope the rest of you did as well. So um, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>